Hey guys, how's it going? Scott Devine here from Scott's Bass Lessons again and today I'm going to be talking about my top five transcribing tips and why transcribing is so important and what it is. In fact, let's talk about what is transcribing. Well, transcribing isn't exactly what it sounds like, okay? So if somebody says transcribing, a lot of people think, oh, okay, so learning something and writing it down, okay? Now, it could mean that. It could mean that. And I suppose the word transcribing means writing it down. But it is not always, you know, meant that way. A lot of people, when they say, oh, I'm transcribing a bass line by so-and-so, or I'm transcribing a solo by John Coltrane, or I'm transcribing whatever you're transcribing, they're not generally writing it down. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But it doesn't mean they're writing it down. What it means is, when you say transcribing, it means that you are learning a piece, or it could be a piece, it could be a lick, it could be a solo, it could be a bass line, but essentially you're learning it by ear. That's what transcribing means. You're learning a piece of music, a bass line, a solo by ear, okay? And you're doing that because you're studying the lang- somebody else's musical language. That's why we do it, and that's why it is so important. If you ask any musician that is you know that's got his or her stuff down okay you know what what was one of the big things that that sort of like brought your playing on they will say transcribing (laughs) you know because it's you know we're you're we're learning the musical language of the masters you know if for for me i'm you know i'm learning stuff from jaco pastorius i'm learning you know lines of pino paladino i'm learning lines of uh, Dominic Di Piazza. I'm, le- you know, I'm, I'm learning these. Uh, James Jameson, and I'm learning these lines because I want to know what these guys are thinking and how they're interpreting um, the music. So when somebody plays a C minor chord, I want to know what Pino Palladino is thinking and playing over that. I want to know how John Coltrane is going to solo over C minor. Because by doing that, we're, you know, we're, we're investigating and, and looking into their musical language and we're soaking it up into our own musical language and then repeating it and learning it and playing it and practicing it. And then that becomes ours. For instance, if you, if you want to be a great public speaker, okay, how would you do that? Well, first of all, you would probably watch a zillion great public speakers on YouTube. You get onto YouTube and you'd start watching public speakers and then you'd start thinking, well, why are they really good at public speaking? What exactly are they doing that um, is making them, you know, so great and so, you know, fantastic to watch? And then you'd start, you know, stripping it down and then trying to get that into what you do. It's the same thing with music. We're just, we're transcribing these guys. We're learning their bass lines. We're learning their solos because we're, we're learning their musical language and then we're putting it on our instrument. So that is why transcribing is so important. And we should be doing it all the time because we're learning the, the, you know, the bass lines and the bass solos and whatever solos of the masters and then get it into our own language. Anyway, so let's look at my top five tips for transcribing. So number one is sing what you're trying to transcribe, okay? Now, it doesn't, you don't have to have a great voice for this. I certainly don't have a great voice, but it just helps you pitch what you're trying to do, okay? So, you know, get whatever you're trying to transcribe. So you could be using, you know, transcription type software where you can slow things down, or you could do it old school like me with a CD player or MP3 player, I suppose now, but CD player would just get very good at rewinding, and do it, you know, like literally like two seconds at a time, you know. Boom, ba ba boom, ba da boom, ba da you know. And then actually try and vocalize what you're going to try and play. So, and that will help you pitch. So let's, for instance, say, what did I sing there? So, um, let's say we were trying to transcribe that bass line, that awesome bass line. Okay, so, boom, da da So first of all, I'd just be concentrating on the first note. Boom. Try and boom, 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 boom. And then I find it on the bass and then rewind. Boom, boom, Rewind. Boom, boom, And I'd be saying it. Boom, da, da. Boom, da, da. Okay. Boom, 
da. Okay. Rewind. Start again. Boom. Bo do do. Rewind. Boom. Bo do do. Boom. Ba da da. Boom. Be. Ba be. Boom. Ba da de. Boom. Da da de. Boom. Ba da da. Rewind. Boom. Ba da da. Boom. Ba da da. Stop. Boom. Ba da da. Boom. Ba da. Boom. Ba da de. Ba. Okay. Boom. Ba da da. That's how it's done. Okay, so sing what you're trying to transcribe because it's going to give, make you be able to pitch and find it on the fretboard. It's really good as well being able to actually pitch what you're playing. Okay, it's great to be able to do that. So sing what you're trying to transcribe. Number two is stick to one tune at a time. Don't spread yourself too thin, okay? What I always like to do is kind of do it on a project by project basis, you know. Um, if I'm trying to transcribe, let's say, James Jameson line or something like that, or some things from a Jameson line, sometimes I don't always do a full tune, because sometimes it's little bits, but, you know, try and stick to one thing at a time instead of sort of like flitting between one thing or another, and really dedicate yourself to getting that one thing down before you move on. It takes time, but it's worth it. Number three is have a goal, have a preset goal. So for instance, you could think, okay, I want to transcribe this whole song. Okay, let's take a Jameson, for instance, a Jameson song, you know, could be an old Motown standard or something like that. Um, and you want to do the whole song, that's cool. Or you could think to yourself, well, I really want to just do, you know, these 16 bars, there's some, there's some great stuff going on in the bass there. I want to really get that down. So just pick 16 bars or eight bars or even it could be a fill. Okay, so you hear a bass fill and you're like, oh, what is that bass fill? And then you transcribe the bass fill or it could be a lick. You hear somebody play a lick, transcribe the lick. It doesn't need to be a full song, but just be really definite about what you want to get from it. And there's a ton of things, guys, that I've got from transcribing. One line that I use all the time is that. It's like a great way of playing like a three six two five one yeah so well Anthony Jackson played it like that and I used it all the time I transcribed it I got it into my musical language I stole it directly from Anthony Jackson on, I'm trying to think of the album that he used it on. He used it on Michelle Patriciani, uh, Michelle Patriciani trio album, I think. Oh no, it was the one with um, Bob Brookmayer on, the trombone player. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, but anyway, like I heard it and I was like, okay, what is that? I worked it out. Worked out how he's using it. And he's just used it on the 3625. So instead of instead of that, he's playing. Cool as anything. So make sure you have a specific goal. It could be a full song. It could be 32 bars, 16 bars, 8 bars, 1 bar, a lick, a line, whatever it is. But try and, you know... Try and have a definite goal before you set out and then you can complete the goal. You know, you have a start and a finish. And then when you've done that, it's like a pat on the back. It's, you know, if you have goals, you can, you know, you can fulfill the goal, you can complete it. And it just, it's great because otherwise it can just be a meandering kind of like, oh, I'm not sure whether I've actually done what I set out to do. So really have goals. It'll really, it'll really help you not only with your transcribing, but with your bass playing and your motivation as well. Okay, number four is do 20 minutes at a time, if that's comfortable, or do small section, 10 minutes at a time. What can happen with transcribing is your ears get worn out. Your ears are like a muscle, okay? So if you go to the gym and you start pumping iron, something that I've never done, but I could imagine myself doing it in the future. If you go to uh, pump some iron in the gym, you can't do it for like two hours at a time. You know, it gets your arms get worn out or your legs get worn out or whatever you're doing in there gets worn out. And your ears are the same. They get worn out. So... Do it, you know, for short stints. I like doing it for 20 minutes at a time and then taking five, 10 minutes off and then revisiting it, essentially. But don't just keep pushing forward, 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 because this is hard. 
like transcription is really hard and it's super time consuming as well. Um, it's really good not to, you know, to, to be really patient about it and don't aim too high in terms of like aim high in terms of what you're trying to transcribe, but don't aim too high in, t- in terms of how fast you're going to do it in. Okay. Give yourself a lot of time. Um, I transcribed a solo, um, or I'm, I'm in the process of transcribing the solo and I've been transcribing that solo for years, eight years, maybe something like that. Like, like seriously, like the same solo. Um, I keep revisiting it and just like focusing on sections that are really doing it for me at the time. And, you know, don't be in a, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Okay. You know, give yourself time, but yeah, but do it in short sections just to, you know, keep your ears fresh and avoid frustration. Number five is one of the most important ones. Okay. Is reverse engineer your transcriptions. And what I mean by that is once you've transcribed the line, so let's take something. Uh, off the top of my head. Okay. So let's say, I've, let's imagine I've heard that and I've transcribed it. Wow, you know, listen to a Pino Palladino album and you play as that, okay? So first of all, wow, I want to learn it, okay? So, so what do you do after you've learned it? Well, after you've learned it, you absolutely need to reverse engineer and find out why it works. You need to know what it's based on. It can't just be a, it can't just be a lick that you play. Okay. You need to understand why that lick works from a musical standpoint. So for instance, in this case, I'd be like, okay, okay. It's based on a D. Okay. So it's based on a, a, oh, it's going to the major third. 5th and the 13th, and then the root, and then up to the 3rd, okay, oh, okay, it's based on a, oh, it's a major pentatonic, right, okay, so it's based on a D major pentatonic, okay, and then I'll be thinking, okay, so it's based on a D major pentatonic, What what's he playing that over, okay, well, it's a D major chord, okay, so now I can use a, a major pentatonic over a major chord, and I can use that particular line. You know, and I'm using it there. So, first of all, learn to play it. Second, figure out what it's made of and what exactly, sort of like what it's made of in terms of scales or arpeggios. Then you want to look at what are they using it over, okay? So what chord are they playing it over? In this case, it was over a D major, okay? And then once you've done that, it's time to take it and start using it in other contexts. So don't just use it and play it along with the track. You want to get that line and then you want to try and insert it into stuff that you're doing. So you want to maybe like to groove like I did. And then you want to think, okay, right, well, I know how to do it on, in D now, and I can, I can do that comfortably over, you know, some of my own grooves. Now I want to move it into different keys. So let's do it in G. Again, I'm using it and then what can else can I use it and can I use it in the context of a 251? Thank you. 
onwards and upwards. Um, but yeah, so what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm getting what I've learned, I'm figuring out how it works musically, I'm learning how to use that within the context of the key I've learned it in, and then I'm transitioning that into different keys. And all of this, guys, is the process of getting whatever you're transcribing into your musical vocabulary. That's why we transcribe, to get and grow, get stuff into our vocabulary and then grow our vocabulary. So then when we're in situations where we're making bass lines up on the spot, you know. You know, we can come up with it on the spot. We don't have to play pre-prescribed stuff. We can improvise, you know, in, in real time. And that's why transcribing is such an important part of what you're doing and, and how to, you know, learn any instrument. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson, this video. Um, again, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do that below. We're nearly on 300,000 subscribers. Woo! We might be on 300,000 subscribers when you watch this video, hopefully. Uh, leave a comment and tell me who you're transcribing right now, okay? Leave a comment and tell me who you're transcribing right now. And also, if you haven't been to scottsbasslessons.com, make sure you go over there, check out the Academy. You can check it out 14 days, completely free. And we can, if you subscribe as well, we send you a ton of free stuff over there. So just go and check it out at scottsbasslessons.com. Other than that, guys, as always, take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed. Bye.